Welcome to Website and TV, I'm Gemma Houghton. Today I'm here with Florian Storp, who's the VP Central Europe for American Express Global Business Travel, and we're going to be discussing the business travel market and how that is developing and changing. So hi Florian, thank you for being here. Hi, good morning Gemma. So could you just kind of set the scene a little bit by explaining, you know, how big is the corporate travel market and what are the kind of current expectations of business travellers? So I think um, corporate travel market is a, a very huge market. Uh, it is not that prominent compared to the leisure travel mm -hmm. business. So everyone, um, especially here at ITB, is talking about mainly about leisure travel, which is definitely a big industry. But corporate travel is increasing. It is uh, more and more important to connect people. The globalization of the industry uh, of the world is seen by more transactions, by more flights internationally, yeah. by more um, travel internationally. And so people um, need to be connected uh, to make business with each other, building networks, and uh, prepare the ground for future projects. And how do the kind of needs and the, the expectations of business travellers compare to leisure travellers and, and personal travel? What are the key differences? The, the key differences is that, from my point of view, in the leisure travel environment, we are used to um, adopt um, the, the new functionalities, great uh, features that are available. The digitalization is there, mm -hmm. and we can easily use very useful um, new developments and, 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 and tools in the leisure travel business. So if you think about using maps, uh, finding your hotel, mm -hmm. um, using apps to book your trip easily, and um, all this is already there. In the corporate travel industry, it is a bit different to implement here and there due to the fact that companies are more or less ring fencing their systems. You have the firewalls, you have um, all the yeah, data security piece. And here it's sometimes not so easy for companies to implement um, these systems and uh, make it easy for corporate treasure as well to use these new features and functionalities. So what should travel brands and hospitality brands, what can they do to help kind of meet that, that need and help those corporates make their next step to making business travel a bit more seamless? I think they should uh, push and uh, should continue to push and uh, develop um, uh, further technology and uh, future technology as they did in the last couple of years. When we look back 10 or 15 years ago, the first developments and online booking tools, for example, in the overall travel industry was implemented by uh, TMCs by travel management companies mm -hmm. by the corporate side of the travel business but then mm -hmm. after um, yes the Expedias the um, the booking.coms and uh, the other dot-com companies were growing so fast in the last couple of years they really made the pace in in the industry and were um, the the leading and uh, the leading part and um, here they should continue to do so because I think corporate travel brands corporate travel provider like we are we need to 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 understand and then also adopt um, what, what they are leading. And we also need to um, understand that the new generation that is coming now and the young travelers of tomorrow, they are used to use mm -hmm. these new technology. And once they drop into the business travel environment, are uh, the corporate travelers of tomorrow, they, they want to use these uh, tools and these, um, these features as well in the corporate travel environment. And they will be disappointed if we are not able to offer that. And that's yeah. why we find, have to find a solution for that. Yeah, because ultimately there's still people traveling, whether they're traveling for personal reasons or for work, it's still yeah, they experience is, they want to have. It would be a big difference. Uh, yeah. And they w wouldn't understand why, for example, can I use an app to book my private trip, but yeah. have to take the phone and book my trip on the phone for, yeah. for corporate reasons. Uh, so it would be odd, I would say. Yeah. And obviously in a big issue also when you, you know book in private travel you make your decisions on cost and destinations and whatever you want to do when it's with work obviously there are sometimes limitations businesses are always trying to reduce costs what what kind of impact does that have on the on the industry and how how can again brands kind of meet that need and provide cost effective and suitable options for businesses when, when we look at corporate travel today, overall we have to say the, the world industry, the world, world economics are in a good shape. Mm -hmm. um, and that means that um, companies usually spend a lot of money mm -hmm. um, and let their travelers go to make business. On the other hand, we see, especially when we look at Central Europe and Germany, um, we have a high employment rate. So mm -hmm. um, there is actually a war for talents. So as a company, you need actually provide and in implement a travel policy that gives a lot of freedom and flexibility to your travelers mm -hmm. to, yeah, to be seen as an attractive employer. Yeah. So, um, so that's why um, um, the companies need to understand what are, is the right balance between cost savings, but also giving more flexibility mm -hmm. to the traveler and allow them to maybe combine 
corporate with leisure travel experience in one trip. So I think there is a lot of challenges um, for, for corporations, but also for the providers and service providers like we are mm -hmm. to help these companies um, to make their internal customers, the business traveler, happy yeah. and keep them satisfied and um, yes, also um, help them to be an attractive employer in the industry. Yeah, absolutely. It's quite a key side of it to make sure that you're actually offering something valuable to those people because, yeah, if not, they might go elsewhere. Exactly, exactly. And what are the factors that you think really make, what are the most important factors for corporate travellers or for companies when they're deciding on, on who to use, you know, which brands to use, which hotels to use? What do they really look for and how can brands kind of within their marketing make sure that they're showing that they're the right choice? I think um, the ultimate criteria um, is um, customer satisfaction, mm -hmm. traveller satisfaction. And at the end of the day, um, as a company, I want to make sure that my travellers are happy. Only happy travellers and happy employees can make good business for the mm -hmm. company and bring good deals back home when they are travelling to Africa, to Asia, to, to the Americas and um, have a maybe very tough conversation with uh, customers or uh, yeah. other suppliers they deal with. So I think this is a very important criteria. How can I satisfy my internal customer as a business traveller? And here um, companies will choose the um, suppliers that are helping them to make, these, uh, to make their, um, their employees happy. And I think here we have to look at service on the one hand side mm -hmm. and technology on the other side. So this needs to uh, come hand in hand. Um, so easy um, to use technology, easy to book a corporate travel um, is important on the one hand side, but um, especially in these days where we have uh, sometimes bad weather conditions or a strike or um, where there's something happening in the world which is not usual, um, you need support mm -hmm. because you need to um, have support that helps you to change the, your trip instantly. Yeah. Uh, you need uh, someone uh, that you can reach uh, during the night, for example, and helps you to yeah. um, find new solutions. And so it come, has to come hand in hand. And these solutions, technology and service, um, um, when this is a perfect fit, um, then, then I think uh, you are the right provider. And what role, if any, do, do online reviews and, and kind of referrals in that way play in, in the business world? Are they as important as in the kind of consumer? Um, I would say it has become a very important mm. role. So uh, when I look uh, five years or even more years back, I would say that travellers' criteria to choose, for example, in hotel was a star rating. So I want to go in a five star, yeah. I want to go in a four star hotel and don't want to stay in a two or three star. Mm. I think this mindset has changed and people look rather at the reviews and the ratings. Yeah. Um, you can see a TripAdvisor or Holiday Check and the mm -hmm. others um, to make their decision. And um, here you look at the reviews and see, is this a really relevant hotel for me? Do they satisfy me with the demand that I have? And uh, I think that also the reviews are, have improved in terms of that you can select or pre-select reviews from business travellers, reviews from family mm -hmm. um, families yeah. or uh, reviews from single travellers. And so if you focus on business travellers and put these reviews into your booking, um, booking tool, yeah. then this is really helpful. And yeah. I would say it has become very important. Yeah, and I think in the future it will become even more. Yeah, definitely the kind of needing reassurance from others and, exactly. and the age of social media, I suppose, yeah. and, and, and looking for validation for decisions. Yeah, yeah. here's an, another, as I say, side discussion happening. How real are these reviews? Mm -hmm. um, or are they maybe faked? Mm -hmm. And uh, this is um, really important to look at because I, I know that there are some discussions happening around yeah. that, but I think you, you and the travellers, they know um, who are the tools they can trust and who are the providers they can trust with yeah. regard to the reviews. Absolutely. And obviously travel is by its nature very international and you have people moving all over the place and you're mm. dealing with therefore every travel brand is going to be dealing with customers from all over the world. What are the biggest things to consider in terms of the differences between cultures and expectations and how you can meet those? Are there any key things to be aware of in that side of things? Um, that's, that's a really um, interesting question. Uh, usually the uh, TMCs, the travel management companies, they focus on supporting um, travellers um, travelling from A to B mm -hmm. and helping them with uh, payment procedure or expense management solutions. But the cultural aspect is um, not, I would say, in the main focus um, of, of the TMCs. Mm -hmm. But um, yes, there are some providers in the industry we, we, we work with 
that help companies to understand uh, cultures in, um, in other countries and also the, let's say, security issues that can um, um, uh, impact their travelers. For example, if you go um, to, to um, places in the world that are not that secure and you, you have your indexes where you can read uh, the countries or you can see the countries that are in the focus, um, we can help um, our companies, our customers to prepare them um, to yeah, like they do the right thing um, mm -hmm. and avoid the, um, the, the wrong stuff um, that you can do. And here we are working together with experts mm -hmm. that are providing trainings to special peer groups. So if you are, for example, experts or um, if you are having a project for a longer time um, in a uh, certain, let's say, unsecure um, mm -hmm. um, uh, region in the world, we can help uh, with the support of, of our um, suppliers that we work with mm -hmm. to prepare these um, travelers um, to do the right thing and avoid the, the risky stuff. Yeah, so providing that content, providing that support is a great way trainings, to yeah. help. Mm -hmm. Yeah add value also from your brand perspective because exactly. they see that you, you're adding that value. So how do you see the industry developing in the next couple of years? What do you think are the real opportunities for, for brands that are trying to target this area? So when, when we look in the future, I think, um, uh, as I said in the beginning, um, due to the globalization um, and the internationalization, we still have um, regions in the world that start to travel. Mm -hmm. And I think um, we are not that year. Uh, yet, yet there. And um, so there will be more and more um, um, international travel um, 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 activity. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, we also see that digitalization helps companies to reduce travel yep. and use new technology like WebEx or um, mm -hmm. uh, virtual conferences. And, um, but I, th I think we will still see an increase in, yeah. in, in travel. Um, what, what we need to, to understand is how do we really satisfy the future travelers um, as we know that more and more younger generations are following now and um, um, here we need to really help the companies to understand the trends, mm -hmm. to provide the right solutions and I was talking about technology already. Yeah. Um, this, will, this is unstoppable yeah? Yeah. So, and we need to understand, understand that, that change is instant. It yeah. happens every day. Every morning I wake up, mm -hmm. I will have an update on my iPhone, I will have an update on my tools, mm -hmm. um, I will see new functionalities and features, and change is instant. We know that people, some people do not like change, but change will be there every minute, yeah. every second. And uh, we have to help companies and travelers to make it easy for them yeah. and uh, use these new tools and functionalities that this hopefully helping them to make their lives easier. Great. Well, thank you very much for talking to us today and sharing your insights. Thank you very much for Thank having you. me. Thank you, Joe.